All right, y'all, special counsel Jack Smith is dismissing his federal election interference case against the orange man due to a longstanding Justice Department policy that bars the prosecution of, of a sitting president. Now, y'all know I already think that's still stupid and BS. Now, nearly 16 months after a grand jury first indicted Donald Trump over his alleged efforts to unlawfully overturn the results of the 2020 election, Smith asked U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin to throw out the case ahead of Trump's impending inauguration. In Smith's motion, he wrote, as a result of the election held on November 5th, 2024, the defendant, Donald J. Trump, will be inaugurated as president on January 20, 20th, 2025. It has long been the position of the Department of Justice that the United States Constitution forbids the federal indictment and subsequent criminal prosecution of a sitting president. But the department and the country have never faced the circumstance here where a federal indictment against a private citizen has been returned by a grand jury and the criminal prosecution is already underway when the defendant is elected president. Confronted with this unprecedented situation, the special counsel's office consulted with the department's office of legal counsel, whose interpretation of constitutional questions such as those raised here is binding on department prosecutors. After careful consideration, the department has determined that OLC's prior opinions concerning the Constitution's prohibition on federal indictment and the prosecution of a sitting president apply to this situation and that as a result, this prosecution must be dismissed before the defendant is inaugurated. Earlier this month, Judge Chutkin canceled the remaining deadlines in the case after Smith requested time to assess this unprecedented circumstance and determine the appropriate course going forward consistent with Department of Justice policy following the election. Now, Trump pled not guilty to federal charges of undertaking a criminal scheme to overturn the results of the 2020 election by listing a state of so-called fake electors. Now, he also say, asked for this to be, to be dismissed with prejudice, prejudice so it could be brought back later. Uh, let me know when we have Jade back, folks, uh, because I want to. Uh, she's a lawyer. I want to. I want to talk to her about this here. Uh, but I'm gonna go to uh, I'm a Congo first. I'm a Congo. So okay, Jade's there. Okay, so he, here's the issue that I have. Uh, constantly with this whole deal, Jake. First, they are operating off of a DOJ opinion, yep. which is based upon a memo written when President Nixon was in office and his DOJ was trying to save his ass. The problem that I have is this opinion has never been affirmed by the courts. So what I don't understand what I don't understand is why Merrick Garland didn't have the guts to say, no, go forward and take this thing to the federal court. Let the courts decide that a person who was indicted prior mm -hmm. to being inaugurated can't be prosecuted. OK, now the court has ruled a president has immunity based upon actions of the office. He was a private citizen. That's, that, to me, is why I, I, have, I'm, I have a problem with what uh, Jack Smith has decided, because Merrick Garland, the, the attorney general, has chosen to be gutless in this situation. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. I think they are being very selective in changing and adding rules as they go along, as you say, that that was a recommendation, suggestion by the DOJ. And also one thing that I'm noticing with that is that um, it, it it brings us to question the statutes of limitation, right? Because there's not going to be any tolling on these statutes of limitation. So what I think they are strategically trying to do is that if you put this law, if you put this, this requirement in place that was never made a law, right, then... By the time Trump is in his presidency, the statute of limitation will probably have ran, right? So there is no way he can be accountable for his decision. And on top of that, um, who would the special uh, counsel now give the... I guess the liberty to to make that decision, right? Would it be the DOJ? Who would the DOJ give that liberty to? Also, the only <laughs> case at that point which would be hanging over Trump's head when he enters the office will be the civil fraud case with a judgment of nearly half a billion dollars. So that was selectively going to be brought up, right, and hanging over his head. However, the other felonies and the other more severe charges and cases will not be. I, I already have an issue, uh, Julian, with New York and Georgia suspending their cases because those are state cases. They, yes. they do not have to abide 
by a DOJ opinion. But let's just be real honest here, Julian. The reason we are here is because Merrick Garland is gutless. Merrick Garland should have called for a special prosecutor on January 21st. No, he waited two and a half years. This is on him. And this is why he will go down as one of America's worst attorney generals. Gutless is a nice thing to say about him. That man really, um, he got a consolation prize. He was going to be a Supreme Court justice nominated by President Obama. He didn't get it. Um, I blame uh, President Obama for bringing that gutless. Okay, I'm editing myself, y'all. You know how when I put my head down, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to say that today on TV. But that gutless mofo um, into the orbit of basically administration leadership because he is no leader. He is no leader. If he didn't start and do it on January 21st, Roland, it should have been February 1st. Um, but they didn't. He, he slow rolled everything. And one wonders if he is actually a Trumpy in disguise because he slow, the slow roll is what benefited the incoming president the most. Um, Bonnie Willis deserves high props in Atlanta. Uh, Tish James in New York deserves high props. And there is no reason for them to dismiss their cases. These are state cases. What he did in Atlanta, calling up, dialing for, for votes. I just need 11,000 and so many votes. That's illegal. Uh, the whole thing with uh, paying strippers and illegally, that's illegal. I mean, it, so if Jack Smith wants to dismiss based on a 1974 Rickson Nick, Richard Nixon protecting law, that's Jack Smith. And he's probably scurred. He is probably scurred. And that's okay, dude. You can be scurred. But the other part of it is this, is this other part. The state cases should not have to go away. And I think Jade is right. You know, the, the whole issue of the statute of limitations uh, works in Trump's favor, but it doesn't have to. It really doesn't have to. There are all kind of workarounds with this. And there's so many brilliant black and other lawyers out there, you know, the day he steps out of office, um, the day he steps out of office, he can wear some handcuffs or bracelets, as they call them. Here's, here's, that, here's what I think is just dumb here uh, on, on McCongo. This is just what I think, just think is just flat out just nonsensical with, with, with this whole deal, okay? So the DOJ opinion says you can't prosecute. Why not test it in court? If the courts say you can't prosecute, yeah. well, then you just go ahead and just can't prosecute. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's all it is. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that Merrick Garland was a Trump plant. I think the problem is when you pick a judge, a former federal judge, to be yeah. a prosecutor, he is mm -hmm. thinking and acting like a judge and not a prosecutor. That part. Which is why many of us wanted Doug Jones in that spot. Yes. For, for, and look, the fact of the matter is, is that too many times in this Justice Department, when it came to Trump, they decided to do nothing because they didn't want to appear to be political, not understanding or not caring about the fact that not doing anything is political. Right. Inaction is an action. And so they waited, what, 14 months after, you know, Cassidy Hutchinson finally came to the January 6th commission and finally decided to launch this investigation. The Justice Department, we've talked about Kristen Clark and so many things that they've done in that department, which have been positive for our community. But at the very top of the issue, the way that they let this particular situation lollygag and let this man who is a, a, just a criminal on so many different levels. I mean, look what's going on with the inauguration right now. They haven't signed a memo of understanding. Understanding, so now they can continue to raise money and anybody, foreign or otherwise, can give money towards his inauguration. Like, it is raking it all in. So they just, they're in action. They could have dealt with this. And like you said, uh, Roland, 
Let's just get it to trial. Let's get this stuff to a judge. And if things become, you know, guilty, not guilty, you can't do that and so on and so forth, then let it be so. But the fact that they didn't want to push the limits for an insurrectionist for who's about to let all of those guys who they actually spent efforts going out to arrest and prosecute, that he's about to let them out and, be, and, and pardon them, the fact that they let this guy skate because of their inaction, because they didn't want to seem political, is a disgrace. And this is something that people are not going to forget anytime soon. And I I'm not going to sit there and say they should be ashamed of themselves, but this is embarrassing for the country that this criminal gets to be at the top of our highest order right now because, in, may, in large part, because the Justice Department didn't do its job. There should have been an investigation started on January 7th because this is what it came down to, and they let it slide. And here we are right now with Trump 2.0. Yep, absolutely. And so, um, yeah, this, this is going to be on Merrick Garland, uh, pure and simple. Uh, Trump is running around saying, I won, I won. No, you actually ran the clock out. That's what actually happened here. Uh, and the bottom line is, as Jack Smith said, uh, them pulling this doesn't negate the fact that he did it. He absolutely yep. did it. Mm -hmm. And so he was guilty. He was flat out guilty. This should be prosecuted. And again, I wish Alvin Bragg in New York and I wish Fonnie Willis in, in, in Fulton County in Georgia would be moving forward because they do not have to abide by this memo. This memo only pertains to DOJ yeah. lawyers. It does not pertain to local prosecutors. But again, folk just sitting here, gutless and scared, and don't want to see them fight. And again, I would rather have the courts affirm this damn memo than we just keep going by a memo that was written in 1972 to protect a crook in Richard Nixon. Another That's point. what it was. Hi, I'm Isaac Hayes III, founder and CEO of Fanbase. Fanbase is a free to download, free to use, next generation social media platform that allows anyone to have followers and subscribers on the same page. Fanbase was built through investment dollars from equity crowdfunding from the Jobs Act. People just like you help build Fanbase. And we're looking for more people to help build Fanbase. We are currently raising $17 million in a Regulation A crowdfund on Start Engine. We've already crossed $2.1 million, but we're looking to raise more capital from people just like you that deserve the opportunity to invest in early stage startups without having to be accredited investors. So right now, I'd like you to go to startengine.com slash fanbase and invest. The minimum to invest is $399. That gets you 60 shares of stock in Fanbase right now, today. And then use Fanbase to connect with friends, grow your audience, and be you without limits.